How's it going everybody? Welcome to the third video in this series. This is the series to help you guys to learn how to flip like a pro and make a lot of money and honestly make your overall experience of RuneScape much more enjoyable because honestly when you fully understand how to do flipping in RuneScape uh, it really does make the game way more enjoyable because making money becomes so much easier and you don't have to worry about grinding your life away in order to make a large amount of gold. If you've ever wanted to be a billionaire, a multi-billionaire, maybe you want to be a three-digit billionaire, you can definitely do all those things by getting really good at flipping. It's just those things will just take more and more time as you go along. <laughs> so anyway, guys, we're going to go jump on right in with uh, risk because we briefly discussed things like risk in the first two videos. But I'm going to be showing you guys a little bit more about risk and how it works and how so how you can avoid risk. And I'm also going to be showing you guys some really cool tricks of how you can pretty much make risk uh, not even exist in some of the things you flip uh, and we're going to go and jump on into all that in this video so right on quickly we're going to bounce back to our billionaire flip club item key so if you are watching this video first for some reason and you you know miscounted and realize this is not number one you should go watch video number one but anyway this right here is the spreadsheet this is one of the spreadsheets that we use in our discord uh, this right here uh, we're going to be going over the risk column. So I'm going to go and jump right on into this and not explain too much because I've already kind of told you guys all about this stuff in the, in the first couple episodes. So, or, oh my God, I keep on calling episodes. This is not a TV show. So we have Noxithe, Longbow, and Staff. Um, if you go over here to the risk column right here, this shows you basically that these have a low to medium risk when you're actively flipping them. And they have, they have a medium to high risk when you're doing an overnight flip on them. Uh, and then you come down here, you see more things like low risk on these Drygores or low to medium for overnight night essentially what this is is like your risk of possibly losing money when you're flipping an item so first of all if you are one of those people that is afraid to lose money while flipping and that is one of the things that keeps you from either starting flipping or flipping certain items or whatever I want you guys to understand and actually honestly you need to understand that you will lose money on flipping every once in a while but the thing is you will always out earn how much you are going to lose as long as you just continue to learn and continue to try uh, so if you if you want to hit those big numbers if you want to have a large bank if you want to have party hats and whatever the heck else you want to buy if you want to dye everything and dye the same thing five different colors whatever you want to do you can't do any of that uh, doing flipping unless you are taking risks. And it, the risks don't always have to be huge. Like you can be moderately safe, uh, but you do have to like take on a certain amount of risk. And right here on this on this spreadsheet, if you have access to the spreadsheet, you can see what the uh, like the, you know the general risk is on an item. I'll scroll down here a little bit more. You'll see a lot of these are like low risk or low medium risk. These things are stuff that's like a little bit slower. Um, like these right here take 60 to 90 minutes on average. These take like 6 to 90, two, three hours. Um, those things are all like that. Go down here a little more. Go down more, 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 more. Oh, let's go over this, this, this page right here. We'll see. Okay. On this page, we have like third age. So third age is the first thing that pops up on this page. Is that top? Yeah, it's top. So this first thing that pops up over here, we have something that says a high risk. Now, Looking over here, we see the third age juridic wreath, and that why it has that it has a high risk for an active flip and a high high risk for an overnight flip. Now, what like what determines risk? A so what determines risk is the overall volatility of an item, how often it changes in price, um, and that also is a, in, something else you have to apply to that though is how long it takes to flip it uh, because. If something changes like every, you know, like say, let's say on average, something changes price every hour, but it takes like 10 minutes to flip it. It's not going to have that big of a risk because, you know, you're not going to be holding on to it for that long on average. And that really takes into factor of the overall risk of an item. So if you're trying to avoid risk, uh, like as much as you can, you're going to want to stick to things that trade uh, more frequently. Uh, because those are the things that are going to uh, give you a little bit less risk just because of the fact you're going to be holding on to them for less amounts of time. If you look right here, the average amount of time that you're going to be able to like to be able to flip this Druidic Wreath uh, with a good margin is going to be something like 10 to 12 or, or more hours. So due to the fact of how long you're holding on to a Druidic Wreath or waiting to sell it, waiting to buy it, whatever you're doing, um, that is a big factor as to why this has a high rating is because of the fact that you're holding on to it for a very long time, that is a lot of time for the price to change um, and it could change in a bad way um, it could also change in a good way um, so but typically if you if you have a sell offer in and the offer in the offer in the item is going up then you're just going to sell pretty quickly so you know obviously because the sell the prices are moving up um, so 
when we talked about volume in the last in the last video, that was a, one of the big things that we covered was overall volume of items and how to de determine how much uh, volume an item has. The thing with uh, with with risk is that it also has a lot to do with the volume because, like I said before, that usually is what determines how long an item takes to flip, right? Um, so if we're thinking about that, uh, we really need to apply the volume to an item to be able to figure out um, also how much risk it will have. Typically a higher volume item, like a U-Log, um, Pack Yaks, stuff like that, are going to have a much lower risk compared to something that might take a very long time to flip. Like if we come down here to these dormant items right here, like Dormant Zeros God Sword. Dor dormant Zeros God Sword... Um, has a lower medium thing. Or, wait, there we go. There we go. Dormant Staff of Sluske. Dormant Staff of Sluske has extreme risk. And the reason why is because not only does it usually take a long time for it to sell, but it also changes very quickly in price. Overall, though, um, it's kind of difficult for someone without all of this information or a big background in flipping items to really understand how to assess the risk of an item. Um, but you can just, you can ask people, uh, you can do stuff like that. But in general, a good rule of thumb is if an item takes a long time to buy or sell and is a very expensive, it probably has a higher risk. If it if it takes um, you know a shorter amount of time to sell, um, then look at that. Something that we can do right here though, and I'm, I'm gonna show you, so if, if we look on this right here, we see that this third age Druidic Mage Hat has a low to medium risk, but it takes four to five hours. So you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, you literally just said the kind of the opposite there. Well, the thing is certain items act differently. And so it's kind of like on a per item basis. If we click this right here, because all the, all the items in these, in these keys have like a link attached to them. So if I click this link right here, it's gonna bring up the RuneScape Wiki, the uh, graph right here. So as you can see right here, see how this hasn't changed much? So when items don't change much at all, that's the reason why it's maintained a low to medium risk, despite the fact it can take a long time to move. It's not traded very quickly. It's not it's not traded very often, but it doesn't really move in price very often either. Third age is something that will typically stay the same price for you know a day or two, uh, unless there's just something crazy making it you know change a lot. So referring to the graph on an item like this is a really great way to figure out an item's risk. Um, some things will be a little bit more difficult to figure out though, uh, and I'll actually example of that. Let's type in a holly wreath. A holly wreath is a great example of something that will have a graph that makes it look like it's very safe and doesn't change much, when in reality it actually does. Uh, so right here uh, we've got holly wreath. See how this you know looks very stable? Well the thing is holly wreath doesn't trade very often, but typically the trades are kind of like a little ways away from each other. Like one trade could be 20, like 25 million less than the last trade. So Holly Wreath is something that could be a little bit more risky than doing something like a third age. But when you look at it on the graph, it's not really gonna look much different. So it's kind of like just experience based on that one. Okay, so let's head, head back over here to the uh, RuneScape and I'm gonna show you guys some cool stuff. This will be a great way um, for you to be able to uh, look at some stuff that is a, a great way to reduce the overall amount of risk that you are taking. So I'm gonna show you guys some stuff. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys, especially the people that are brand new to flipping, are really going to enjoy this part of the video because I'm gonna be showing you guys all kinds of cool things that you can do in order to reduce the risk as much as possible and do extremely safe flips that can also also result in some pretty crazy money. So the first thing I want to talk about is going to be ALK values. If I go in here and I type in Elder Rune Plate, uh, let's see, Elder Rune Plate Body plus five. Uh, so see this right now, this price right now, 1597.4. Let me see if I can get one right away. I do. Okay, so this is kind of cool. This is actually really awesome for the video. You're you're all about to be like, what? Uh, so if we look right here, Elder Room Plate Body Plus Five. I just bought this thing instantly for fifteen ninety seven point four. If you remember from the very first video, how I said that when you instantly buy something, then that usually means that the instance like th that that usually becomes your sell price, correct? Um, so I will I will instantly sell this in a second to show you guys what you can probably buy this for, and then that'll also go along with what we're talking about. So we got Elder Room Plate Body Plus Five. I'm actually gonna go ahead and buy another one to make this uh, easy, which actually, you can, you can click on sale history here. You can click on this and then you can just buy it for the same price. So that saves time. Um, boom, right there. If I go in here now and I'm gonna go ahead and instantly sell this bad boy. Let's see what we get. Boom, 1590. So we have right there, looking at the sale history, we have an instant buy of 1597.4. 
we have an instant sell of 1590.008. That means that right now you could put an offer in for 1590 point, or if you can put like 1590.00, whatever, you can, you can go plus one GP over this price and get these to buy, right? So what is the significance about this item? If you don't already know, you can go over here, you can click on this little, this little money symbol here, and then you can throw items from your inventory into this and it'll give you a price checker. So when this symbol right here, the like exchange symbol is showing, that shows you the actual grand exchange value of something. So 1597401 is the grand exchange value of something. When you click this right here, it switches it to the high alchemy value. The high alchemy value of these plate bodies is 1.6 million flat. That means that at any given time, whenever you feel like it, you can high alchemy this plate body right here for 1.6 million flat. Now, you're probably already catching on to what we're talking about here. So if we go back in the grand exchange, and I look back at my sale history, that means that realistically, I could buy as many of these Elder Room plate bodies as I possibly want to. Like I can go in here right now and go 1590.0 right there. So, so 1 million, 590,000, 10 GP. I'm gonna buy 100 of these. And the reason why? Because I don't really have a risk involved by buying 100 of these, right? If, you, if, you're, not, if you're not following me 100%, check this out. I'm buying them for 1590. I could I could just instantly buy all of them and it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter because the high alchemy price for this Elder Room Plate Body Plus 5 is 1600k guys. That means that right now I'm buying this for 10,000 lower than high alchemy. If anything goes wrong, if for any reason I'm like, uh, I just feel like getting out of this item, I can just high alk them for profit. I actually will make a million gold by high alking these. Um so there's that, but remember this is a video about flipping and I'm not really trying to teach you guys how to find good things to high alk, despite the fact that Elder Room Plate Body Plus 5 is a great thing to high alk, as you can tell. Um, we're not really, not really trying to show you that. What I'm trying to show you is this. When you find items in the Grand Exchange, and also a combat bracelet uh, might also be one of those items. Let's see, 12, 3, 20, let me see what this high alk's for. Let me look, boom, boom, yeah. 12, 6, 24 is the high alchemy for this. The price in the grand exchange for these things right now is 12, 3, 20. That is, that, that's below high alchemy. So once again, the, the combat bracelet is another example of what you can do. What you can do is you can buy these things in the grand exchange for a safe price that you know you can get out of at any time. Like right now, I'm buying these for a safe price that's below high alchemy. I can get out of these anytime I want to. And then what you could do is you could throw them in there for another price, like 16, 10K. And then boom, and then boom. Now, the thing is, is I can let these sit and try to flip these and try to make some good money on these. And I don't have any risk because I paid less than high alchemy price, which means I can sell them for whatever I want to and not have a risk. Like, because, you know, obviously, like I just explained, you can high alchemy them. So what you can do is, <laughs> like I said, not trying to show you guys high alchemy guides here, but right here, combat bracelet number four, if I'm buying these things at 12, 320, which is below high alk, I can go in here and buy 10,000 of them. That's fine. And then maybe I'll try to sell them for, you know, 14, 261. It doesn't matter. I, I can try selling them for higher. And if, and if something goes wrong, well, uh, I guess not really something goes wrong, but if they don't sell, then I can just high out them. I can throw them in my invention machine and let them high out themselves. It doesn't really like the, there's no risk involved in these types of items. So you could literally go through hundreds of items in the grand exchange, trying to find things that, that sell for like that, that will not instantly sell for better than their high out value. If I type in dragon fire shield, which I'm pretty sure is another one of these examples. Um, uh, 1195809. I'm going to actually instantly buy this because I just want to make sure we get one. So check this out. Okay, right here is a really great example. 1219999 is what this thing just instantly bought for. So 1,220,000 essentially. If I go over here and I type and I, I put this in over here, it's the high alk. So our GE price is 1195.8. The high alk is 1.2 million. And we already know it sells for more than 1.2 million. And we also know the grand exchange is below the high alchemy. Perfect, right? That's literally exactly what we're trying to find. So I would put this in there for 1219 uh, and drop off a little bit of money. It doesn't really matter. And then boom, and just let that thing sell. What I could also do is I could put another uh, uh, offer in here for dragon fire shields. And I could just bump this up a little bit to go a little bit above where the grand exchange is. Put an offer in for 100 and boom. So there we go. 
I'm now buying these for what the GE mid is, which honestly, these probably do buy for this price. And then I already know they sell for this price because I just instantly bought them. And if for any reason I feel like getting out of this item, I just high elk them all because I paid less than the G than the high elk value. So that's what I'm talking about when you can use something that has an, what, what is usually called a high alchemy floor. So an alchemy floor, what that means is it can't really go, it cannot go less than the high alchemy value currently is. So they're extremely safe to flip because there is literally zero risk involved of me doing these dragon fire shields. The only, the only risk involved at all is if I misclick or mistype and accidentally sell these dragon fire shields for 100 GP each. I don't know, <laughs> you know, like something like that. There's a, this is a very, very safe and great tactics for you guys to be able to uh, make a ton of money um, by doing these kind of flips and then, you know, you know, kind of work your way up, you know, like slowly that... Oh, I guess I'm, I, I'm kind of getting a little scatter-minded here, but essentially, if you are afraid of losing money, this is a great way to start flipping. So next thing I wanna show you guys is the linked prices. So if I go to Dragon, let's, uh, let's see, dra uh, Dragonstone Bracelet. Yeah, okay, Dragonstone Bracelets. So I'm gonna go ahead and instantly buy this Dragonstone Bracelet. Uh, so we get 10, 7.30. I'm going to instantly buy a dragon stone. I'm show you guys some more cool stuff right here. Instantly buy this dragon stone for 9,000. Not bad, not bad. Uh, and I'm also going to uh, instantly buy a gold bar. Now, what this is, is called like, it's kind of like a linked value. I call, I call them a link value. Um, and what a link value essentially means is that when you have supplies like this Dragonstone and this gold bar, those are linked to a Dragonstone bracelet. And the way they are linked to a Dragonstone bracelet is in the sense of when I use these two items, I can make the Dragonstone bracelet and then making the Dragonstone bracelet, um, would it just, like they're all linked together to this item right here. It's high alchemy value. I'll kind of, I'll try to explain that a little bit better because I think that was a little rough. Dragonstone bracelet. In the GE, 10,464, high alchemy value, 11,475. 11, so right away, we already know that we could do the trick I just showed you with the alk floors on flipping these Dragonstone bracelets if we wanted to, but I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth than just that. So if we go right here, let's look at this total value down here. This total value down here is 11,475, right? Pull this out, boom, boom. This total value is 9,587. So essentially what that means is you could be, you could almost freely flip these gold bars and these dragon stones themselves without too much worry or risk about what's going on. If I was to buy equal parts of gold bar and dragon stone, and the reason why is because at any given time I could just craft dragon stone bracelets and then high out them, or just sell them in the grand exchange. Because as you can see right here, nine five eight seven is still less than the grand exchange value of these, it's 10,464. So if you don't mind the idea of using some of these supplies to craft with in a worst case scenario kind of situation, then you can freely buy as many of these dragon stones matched up with gold bars as you want to. Now the reason why I say matched up by the way is because if you have 5,000 dragon stones and 100,000 gold bars, then you don't really you don't really negate the risk there because you're not able to make the uh, the bracelets with all those gold bars because you only have five thousand dragon stones if you know what I'm saying you could still lose money overall because of the fact that you have ninety five thousand extra gold bars so if you're gonna be doing this trick I would try to keep these numbers uh, kind of similar and then as long as you do that it doesn't really matter if if one of them goes down the other one goes up or if they both go down you just craft the dragon stone bracelet it doesn't really matter I can tell you though that items that are typically like this where they have like the bar and the gem and then the finished product they don't usually both drop like because this item is held up by a high alchemy value and also 10464 is already quite a bit below the high alchemy value in the first place so the chance of these two things going that much lower not too likely i'm just going to go ahead and throw that out there um so there is that 
So anyway, guys, I really hope that uh, these these are a couple different things that uh, help you guys out. In the next episode, I'm actually going to... Oh my God, I keep on saying next episode. Whatever, whatever. You know what? It's a TV show and you guys are going to like it. So um, in the next video, I'm going to be showing you guys a little bit more of this kind of safe flipping because I really think you guys are going to going to enjoy the whole idea of doing the safe flipping. Uh, we're going to be showing... I'm going to be showing you things like doing shop, like uh, shop prices and stuff like that and also uh, swapping things for shards or whatever. I'm going to show you that all, all that kind of stuff in the next video. Thank you so much for being a supporter of the channel. I'm really appreciating the fact that you guys are watching the videos. I really hope they help you. Please leave all the comments and questions that you would like in the in the, in the the comment section below, and I will for sure answer all of your questions. Um, please join our Discord if you'd like to. Everyone in there loves to flip. Uh, well, most people do. <laughs> Even if you don't want to flip, it's still a great community, and you can always get help with anything you need down there. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.